as a result of cutting the stone out, now there would be sharp edges on the stone. And those sharp edges could damage the sheep. And so what they would do is they would take the sheep and they would wrap the sheep in something called swaddling clothes. And so when Mary gave birth in the manger, the only clothes available were not sculptured by Tots R Us or Toys R Us or whatever the, 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 the place is, but instead it, was, it probably would have been swaddling clothes from a lamb. Furthermore, it's, it's interesting because you see, not was it a special building. And, and I want to stop here just for a minute. What if, what if there would have been room in the inn? Huh, then Jesus could have been born in a hotel. That wasn't God's plan, was it? What if a relative would have said, well, come and spend the night with us? No, you know what? God designed the plan so that the Savior of the universe would be born in the most humble setting he could possibly be born in. I don't think there's a single person that would choose to give birth to their, their child in a, in a cave, in a place where animals normally slept, but God did. And so... It was probably, the surroundings were probably made of stone and, and, and not wood, and it would have sharp edges. And then there were special shepherds and special lambs. This is something that just recently I've come to appreciate. You know what? In Bethlehem, the shepherds in Bethlehem were, were different and unique. They were, they were Levitical shepherds. They were priest shepherds. They were actually priests who were doing shepherd work because on special feast days, there weren't enough sheep in Bethlehem, uh, in, in, in Jerusalem, sorry. Because Jerusalem would be a big city and they would need hundreds, maybe thousands of lambs. And so it was so important that shepherds who were priests or priests became shepherds so that they could go down and they could help groom and raise Passover lambs. Now, a Passover lamb was, was incredible because a Passover lamb, remember, a lamb had to be perfect. No spot, no blemish. And so can you imagine if they were to have a, a lamb born and they put it into the cave and as the animals are, are packed in there, more and more sheep are in there, you can imagine the little lambs, they, they get squished against the sides and maybe it gets a cut ear or maybe it nicks a leg. And the minute it does that, it's no longer available as a Passover lamb. It would be disqualified. And so here's the plan that, that God has. He says to the shepherds, not probably any shepherd. I think he went to the priestly shepherds, the Levitical shepherds. You want to know why? Because he said, this is going to be a sign unto you. I don't know that it would have been a sign to everybody. I'm a city boy. I don't know that it would have caught my attention. And maybe even others all around Jerusalem, it wouldn't have caught their attention. But Levitical priest shepherds, they would know. Because that was their habit. Their habit was to take that baby and to wrap that baby in sheep's clothing. And then it says to, to, to lie that, that baby in a manger. And I like it because you see Jesus, well, the real truth is he was the real Passover lamb, wasn't he? And so here's Mary. And instead of wrapping that child in fancy children's clothes, well, she wrapped that child up in clothes probably that would have been suitable for a little lamb. And then she's going to lay that lamb not in a, in a wooden manger, but probably in a stone manger. Because you see those little lambs that were to be protected sometimes after they were born well, they would have to be placed into a, a manger, and the manger was a food trough. And the food trough was made out of stone, too. You see, God says, okay, I'm going to do this. And so he doesn't call just random people, but he calls shepherds. Now, the Bible says that shepherds were often despised by people. The Egyptians despised shepherds. Joseph was even afraid to admit that his family were shepherds. But remember, God has a special place for shepherds. He calls Jesus the good shepherd. And he goes to the priestly shepherds. He says, I'm going to show you a sign. 
I want you to go and you're going to find a baby and the baby's going to be unique because the baby's going to be wrapped in clothes that you normally wrap a lamb in. And then that baby's going to be lying in a manger. He's going to be laying in a feed trough made out of stone. You see, only two, two things were ever wrapped in swaddling clothes. Number one, Passover lambs. And Jesus was the Passover lamb, wasn't he? And next, people who were dead. And Jesus was born to die. In both ways, it's quite a, it's quite a special sign, isn't it? And so, special shepherds, special lambs, special manger. The word manger is really only used one time. And those priestly shepherds, they would have recognized the fact that, that this was the sign that, that God had given them. And, and as we look at all this, here's my concern. You might say, you know what? You really haven't told us anything we don't know. But I'm afraid that sometimes you can be so close to Christmas that you can be blind to it. Because we've gone through a Christmas season. And the summary of Christmas is all about the record sales. The record number of packages that were delivered or weren't delivered. The record number of people taking stuff back. I want to tell you another part of the story because you see just a few miles away, Herod. Remember that that king that was jealous? Just a few miles away, Herod had a palace. And Herod had over a dozen palaces in Jerusalem. Now you'd think a dozen would be enough, wouldn't you? But Herod one day said, I, I, I need one more. And so here's what he did. He, he said, anyone can build a palace on a mountain. But only Herod can build a mountain with a palace in it. So here's what Herod did. Herod, you see the place a circle there called the Herodian? Well, Herod took a mountain over here. He chopped down the whole mountain and he built another mountain just a couple of miles away carried every bit of dirt with slaves to build a mountain, to build a special fortress in it. It's called the Herodian. And it may have been his favorite spot. And frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the, the, the wise men found Herod. But here's what's interesting. From this aerial view, do you see where the Herodian is? And do you see, uh, we call it the Church of the Nativity, where Jesus might have been born? Less than three miles and from the Herodian to the shepherd's field, less than three miles. And Herod is there, and he says, where's this king? Herod missed Jesus by three miles. Huh. And then remember the innkeeper? Here comes Mary and Joseph. And whether they're with a donkey or a, a cart or a horse, or I don't know, but, but can't you see him? Knocking on the door of the inn. And Joseph said, any chance you got a room left? And the guy says, no. He said, no rooms left. Joseph says, yeah, but wow. If you knew how close my wife was to delivering our first child, well, he'd say, I'm sorry. And he probably poked his head out the door. I, I picture he was probably three feet away from Jesus. And he missed him. And so God says, Okay. Here's what I'll do. I'll call the shepherds. And the Bible says the shepherds came with haste. And they went there and they saw a baby. And that baby was, was wrapped in, in swaddling clothes. And I can just hear the shepherds say, wow, that, that's, that's crazy. I mean, for this mother to, to do that. I mean, how, how in the world would, would a mother ever decide to, to wrap that baby in swaddling clothes? And then one would say, man, putting that baby in a, in a feed dish that animals had slobbered in and, and whatever animals do in their feed dish. But you know what? They went to see him, didn't they? And the story, the Christmas story goes on. It says that then Mary would bring little Jesus to the temple. And there's Anna, 84 years old. And when she saw Jesus, she said, this is him. My soul can rest. I've seen the salvation of the Lord. Simeon, old Simeon, you know what he does? He takes the child. He grabs the child. He's not going to be three miles away. 
He's not going to be three foot away. He grabs the child. He holds that child. And he said, this is the Redeemer. This is the Savior. This is God's plan fulfilled. And then I wonder about us. You see, each of us, we're an innkeeper. And we decide whether there's any room for Jesus. How about in your life? Oh, you say, you don't understand. I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a junior in high school and I got papers to write and I got basketball practice to go to and I got girlfriends. And, and, and we've all got something, don't we? And we could be three foot away. But thank God for Anna and Simeon. They took a hold of the baby and they welcomed that little baby in and they got to enjoy the real Christmas, didn't they? What about you? You see, those shepherds, they, they weren't random shepherds. They, they were Levitical shepherds. They, they weren't just there on a sightseeing mission. They, they could recognize swaddling clothes. They could recognize the, the special thing of, of being in a manger. I think it's so important there's a song that I want you to listen to now. It's by Chrissy Knuckle. And the title of it is Wrap This One Up. And I want you to see how this song blends together what we've been talking about here with a special place, a special birth, and how it links birth and death together. the call of a shepherd in a field nearby to tend and to carry his flocks by night they were not ordinary sheep they were set apart born to be passed over land and when a spot this male was born He was held on the manger floor Swaddled up just to keep him calm Until his time And the shepherd sang Wrap this one up He is a lamb Without blemish Wrap this one up He'll make his way to the temple Born for sacrifice He'll join the others and pay the price Wrap this one up, wrap this one up Oh, the call of a mother In a town nearby and to carry on this holy night Not an ordinary child, but the Son of God Breathed by the Holy Spirit And when the baby King was born He was held on the manger floor she swaddled him up, she knew his time would come As she sang Wrap this one up, he is the one that we adore Wrap this one up, he'll wear the crown forever Wrap this one up, wrap this one up 
call love a savior on a hill nearby. All alone he would carry the weight of all mankind, becoming the curse for us. He gave his life, for he knew that his time had come. Wrap this one up, he is the lamb without blemish. Wrap this one up, he paid the price, and it is finished. The death would have no sting. No accident that he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Because you see, that would link the cradle, the manger, to the tomb. Because you had to be a, a Passover lamb to be wrapped in swaddling clothes. And only a dead person would be wrapped in swaddling clothes. But you know what? He came in his birth. And in his death, in humility, swaddling clothes, simple clothes, grave clothes, sheep's clothes. But when he comes again, he'll come in power. He'll come in a royal robe. He'll come in every single person. will acknowledge who he is and how great he is. Listen, Christmas is special because God had no other way to introduce the plan of redemption to mankind than to bring a baby, to give a sign Shepherds, go look for swaddling clothes. Go look for a, a little feeding trough. And the one you'll find there will be that Messiah. Have you found him? You're the innkeeper. You can either invite him in. Or you can say, no, no room for you. Too busy this Christmas to enjoy the real meaning of Christmas. And that's Jesus. Father, we come to you this morning. And we thank you. For the Lord Jesus, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you that you loved us so much that you're willing to give heaven's best for the earth's worst. Father, we thank you for every detail of the Christmas story. May we, may we love you and love your son who has given to us as that unspeakable gift. Thank you that he was born, that he was perfect, that he was that spotless lamb. And John the baptizer could say, behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And then, Father, we see him on the cross, bearing our sin, beaten and bruised and crucified for us. And while he was wrapped again in swaddling clothes, the grave clothes could not hold him. He rose in power. And so, Father, we celebrate with you this year, Christmas. We thank you for your divine purpose and your divine plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.